So, uh, you know how I like to go on eBay and buy ridiculous things? Well, this might be the most insane thing I've ever done because this, well, it's a developer transition kit, which was never publicly available. And yet I found one on eBay and there's no other way to say this. Today, I am going to give you a world's first exclusive in-depth look at this Apple Silicon Mac that no one was able to buy. We're gonna benchmark it. We're gonna tear it down and give you the first ever look at a DTK logic board. Oh yeah, this, this is really happening. Today's video is sponsored by Newegg and iPayson through Newegg's exciting holiday discounts and promotions. The iPayson gaming desktop is currently on sale and includes Core i5-12600KF with Intel's latest big little core design and massively improved gaming, 3D modeling, and productivity performance, as well as the latest RTX 3060 12 gigabyte GPU, 16 gigabytes of dual channel DDR4 RAM, and a one terabyte NVMe SSD, giving you the fastest all flash performance. With plenty of RGB, triple intake fans, 120 millimeter CPU cooling stack, and a 750 watt power supply, this pre-built just doesn't compromise. Newegg's Deal Sember event brings you tons of deals just like this in a bunch of categories. From PCs and laptops, computer components, storage and memory upgrades, to gaming and more, Newegg's Dealcember has it all. Check out the links in the description below to learn more about Newegg's Dealcember. Check out the iPayson Gaming Desktop, as well as some of my personal favorite deals from this event. Big thanks to Newegg and iPayson for sponsoring this video, and now let's get back to it. So the developer transition kit is really, really interesting. If you don't remember, this came out back at WWDC of 2020 when Apple announced the transition to Apple Silicon. And they released this, which is essentially an iPad, an A12Z, stuck inside of a Mac Mini. But no one ever got a chance to actually look at one up close and dive into it. Until today, which is exactly what I'm going to do. And I mean, I can't believe that we found this on eBay. You don't wanna know how much it cost, but let's go ahead and unbox a developer transition kit for the first time. I have no idea how a developer transition kit made it two years without even being opened, but that ends right now. This is like the least special feeling unboxing because it's just a Mac mini but it's also the most special feeling unboxing because it's probably the rarest modern Mac that you could possibly find. Oh my goodness. I'm acting like this looks interesting or special. Oh, okay. We do have this little special booklet. The future of Mac is yours to write. What's in this? Congratulations on being one of the first developers for Mac powered by Apple Silicon. We do get Apple stickers though, so at the very least, these developers were given the prerequisite for a Mac, which is of course the Apple stickers. In here we just have a normal charger, we don't need to unbox that, you've all seen those before. Let's go ahead and take a look at this Mac itself. I'm actually really curious to see if this says Mac Mini on the bottom or not. Oh, it does. There really is no visual indication from the outside that this is anything other than a normal 2018 Mac Mini. Did I, did I get scammed? Is this a scam? Oh, no, it's not. Take a look at that. That's two USB-C ports when the 2018 shipped with four. So there's our proof. This is a real Apple developer transition kit. I'm holding it in my hands. Uh, I honestly am kind of at a loss for words. This is the weird bastard child first Apple Silicon Mac that no one has ever reviewed. So let's turn it on. Let's plug it in and we'll see what happens. I, I mean, I don't know why it wouldn't work, but 
This is kind of like a weird, janky, old, not that old, prototype-y kind of thing. Well, okay, that's encouraging. Oh ho ho! Well, folks, we're in. We've set up an account. This is a working DTK. We're running a pretty early build of Mac OS Big Sur. In fact, if we go up here to the About This Mac, it doesn't really know what it is. It says Mac OS version 10.16 beta. So this is before Apple even referred to this as Mac OS 11. That's how early this is. And it just says we have an Apple A12Z Bionic and 16 gigabytes of memory. Actually, how much storage is in this device? I actually don't know. Half a terabyte. Interesting. I also have your Magic Mouse is wirelessly connected to this Mac in one minute. It's a notification from the future. I can't believe that we're looking at an actual DTK. What I also can't believe is that there are some janky things about this device. Uh, the fan just blows at a constant speed. I don't know if you can hear that on the mic. Maybe if I lift it up, you can hear it. It just is kind of going. I think the next step is loading up some benchmarks, right? Do you guys want to know how the only unreleased Apple Silicon Mac performs? I do. All right, so I've got us up and running and I am running Cinebench on a DTK for the first time ever. Cinebench doesn't even know what we're looking at here. It just says Apple processor, eight cores, single core at 2.5, multi-core at 2.3. That's pretty minimal. I honestly have no idea what to expect here, but this thing behaves very, very weird. So I've installed iStatistica up here and you can see it's able to pull usage details. So you can see that we're using our entire CPU. You can see that we're not using a ton of memory, but this system does not appear to have a single temperature sensor, at least one that iStatistica can find for the CPU. And honestly, I'm not surprised about that because the fan just runs at a constant speed. So it almost seems like there is no temperature readout on this SOC. All right, finally, what's the score going to be? I'm actually so curious. Hurry up, this is not fast. 4353. Okay, so that puts us on par with Honestly, a lot of the Intel MacBooks that this actually replaced. This is actually doubly interesting because a lot of the quad-core Intel MacBooks that came before this scored well below that. So, honestly, Apple probably could have transitioned to Apple Silicon quite a bit earlier than they did. Remember, this chip is effectively four years old. It's from 2018. So, yeah, I mean, it's no M1, obviously, but that's not nothing. I wanna do a GPU test. So we're gonna pull up the Blender BMW GPU render. And this one I'm very curious about uh, cause the M1 and the M2 have made significant improvements over this GPU. Oh, interesting. So Blender actually does not recognize this GPU for their metal API. Uh, this version of Mac OS is not new enough. And I suspect this GPU is not one that they would support. So. We're gonna have to run this with just the regular uh, device. So I'll, I'll compare that to an M1 chip running also just the regular. God damn, it says it's six minutes remaining. Okay, so after eight minutes and 59 seconds, uh, this thing has finally finished. Now for reference, the A12Z has an eight core GPU. I ran the same exact render, also without using metal, on my seven core M1 iMac, and that took five minutes and 38 seconds. So even missing a GPU core, that thing absolutely smokes the DTK. I think we all kind of knew that the M1 chip was a big step above this, but until now, I don't think we really knew how big of a jump going from A12 to essentially the A14 generation was. But another thing that we're noticing as we're going about doing these tests is there's a lot of janky stuff about this DTK. For example, the USB-C ports on the back that we talked about earlier, those are not Thunderbolt ports. 
The A12X does not have Thunderbolt capability, uh, and so those are just normal USB-C ports. You can't even output 4K through them. Another weird quirk, in the recovery partition, the macOS version is listed with a Catalina icon. So in order to get Final Cut Pro running, I actually had to update the system to a newer build of Big Sur because the one that it came on out of the box didn't even have a graphics driver. It's, it was a little janky, but now we can actually render out a timeline in Final Cut and compare the A12Z directly to the M1 chip. This is something that has never been done before, and for all of us that have been wondering for the last four years, how would an iPad Pro run Final Cut Pro? Well, we're about to find out for the first time ever. So this is a 10 minute 4K 60 FPS timeline with a mixture of titles, layers, we've got 4K on top of 4K with a drop shadow. There's a couple of things going on here to give this a good test of its rendering performance. So the M1 Mac Mini, that took 13 minutes and 37 seconds. The DTK with the A12Z, that took 17 minutes and 44 seconds. Honestly, not that bad. And then there's the 2018 Mac Mini. Well, that took an hour, four minutes and 22 seconds. So 13 minutes, 17 minutes, over an hour. And the crazy thing that dawned on me as I was doing this test is the A12X came out at the same Apple event in October 2018 as this Mac Mini with the six core i5. I don't know, it's just one of those weird little details that kind of blew my mind. And also Apple, this is basically an iPad with Mac OS shoved onto it, and it runs Final Cut Pro really well. The timeline performance is extremely respectable. It's certainly better than this old Intel. So why don't we have Final Cut Pro on the iPad yet, Tim? Hurry up. And by the way, when I say that this is an iPad, it is literally an iPad. On the old build of Big Sur that was on this when I unboxed it, it had camera drivers. It had face ID drivers. It had touch screen drivers. It's literally just an A12Z taken out of an iPad Pro. Oh, Final Cut Pro is back. I did not ask for that, but anyway, they just took an iPad Pro and stuck it on a pretty low effort board design from a Mac Mini. That is hilarious. And also kind of proves the fact that you could very easily install iPad OS on an Apple Silicon Mac and vice versa. So it's only a matter of time before someone figures out how to do it. But right now, what I think we need to do is tear this thing apart for the world's first teardown of a DTK. Okay, so the big question in doing this teardown is, does this look more like a 2018 Mac mini or more like an M1 Mac mini? Okay, so far everything looks very familiar. Okay. Let's see what's inside. This logic board is really long. So this is definitely looking more like a 2018 than an M1. That is super interesting. And look at that. We've got three coin cell batteries inside there. That's really weird. So here we've got the ultimate comparison. A 2018 Mac Mini, the developer transition kit, and the M1 Mac Mini. And you can kind of see that this is a perfect hybrid of both of them. We have the long board and the same power supply connection in the DTK as we do in the 2018. But obviously we don't need this big long heat pipe, the RAM hatch and all of the stuff going on back here. They all have the same fan. They all appear to have more or less the same heat sink. This is really, really interesting. So of course we gotta keep tearing it down. I'm not gonna stop here. Let's pull this logic board out. All right, so everything is pretty standard here. This is the exact same fan that you'll find in an M1 Mac mini right now. There is your first ever look at a fully complete logic board assembly from a DTK. 
And oh my goodness, this does not look like a typical Apple logic board. <laughs> So we'll pull in the 2018 and the M1 boards for comparison. Obviously you can see that the general outline of the board is identical to the 2018, but this entire upper area is more or less blank. You can see why Apple decided to make the M1 board a lot more dense. Just the lack of traces on this bare exposed board. You don't see that on the other boards here. Uh, the other thing that's really interesting about the DTK is they apparently didn't change the board design through the rounds of prototyping. So this one that shipped to developers still has these debugging pads. You can see it says active ready, 3v3, PG. There's all of these debug pads, which would have been when they were prototyping these boards and they just shipped them with those pads. If I flip the board over here, and look at these power on pads, force DFU, on off, PMU reset. These are the types of things that you would see when you're halfway through prototyping your board, not on something that's actually shipping. This is really, really crazy stuff. What's also really interesting is there are some things that look like they were just copy and pasted from the 2018 board. For example, this cluster of chips, that's exactly the same right by the standoff screw. There's also this little cluster here by the USB-A ports, that's copy and pasted over. One thing we don't see are this cluster of chips, there's two of them. These are for the Thunderbolt ports in pairs. We don't see that here because again, this DTK doesn't actually have Thunderbolt. Now looking at the M1 Mac Mini, you don't see this same sort of copy and pasting. There aren't any of these clusters of chips that are visually the same from one to another. So it seems like Apple literally just took the 2018 Mac Mini, modified it to run an A12Z, and that's it. What, what am I looking at? It's this weird Frankenstein's monster halfway between Intel and Apple Silicon. It's really, really cool. And if I'm honest, a little bit janky. I mean, remember those three coin cell batteries? Why on earth would this thing need three of them? Well, apparently the SMC on this board absolutely munches through batteries. So while most computers just have a single one that can last for many years, this guy needs three batteries and only lasts six months, which is exactly how long these were deployed for. So. There you go, why redesign it when you can just pop some extra batteries on this giant PCB and be done with it? I kind of love this thing. It's this beautiful, janky, wacky board. That It's so un-Apple in its lack of polish, but it's also so significant because it's the birth of Apple Silicon. This is the first Apple Silicon Mac, and it's not one that you can actually buy. But now I think it's time to put this thing back together. So I think it's safe to say that this is probably one of the most insane videos I've ever done. To my knowledge, no one else has ever run benchmarks on a DTK publicly. This is the only video review that exists of this thing out there. So this is an absolutely incredible piece of weird janky history in between Intel and the Apple Silicon age. And honestly, I'm excited to do more with this thing, so let me know what you want to see in the comments below. Thank you guys so much for watching, and I will see you in the next video.